Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. You're about to watch a video we did of interviews with some disabled veterans that were in our workshop last month, that being April 2017, in Niagara Falls, Ontario. And in, to preface it, I just wanted to give credit where credit was due. You're going to hear a lot of thanking Rob, but you got to understand that there was a tremendous number of people that went behind this. There were, there were numerous donors. We have actually have a GoFundMe page. You can go on there and see. We had a lot that were a lot of donors that were done anonymously as well. But there were some people that really stood out that uh, when I contacted them for help, they really stepped up to the plate. So I just want to share it with you so that you'll know when you hear these guys talking. Jamie at Trend Routing provided uh, each one of our vets with a uh, Trend Diamond Plate. Brian at IBC gave a, each one of the vets, donated uh, two chisels each. Affinity Tools gave everybody a bottle of Honrite, something I use regularly when I sharpen. Mike at Woodworkers Haven donated some bandsaw blades to us that we use when we make our saws. And we were able to give each one of the uh, vets one of our saws. Uh, Ross at the Portland Woodcraft provided uh, a whole kit of tools for one of the vets. Ray and Mary at the Harrisburg Woodcraft store donated all the tools for one of the vets. Wayne at the Loveland Woodcraft, he and his staff donated all the tools for seven vets. Uh, Aaron at Nashville Woodcraft store donated tools for one of the vets. Paul at the Greenville Woodcraft store donated tools for one of the vets. And Ryan at the Salt Lake City Woodcraft store donated, donated tools for one of the vets. We went around the local area to get some help. Uh, Sunset Grill in Niagara Falls helped feed our vets. Uh, I got a, I, Dan and the staff at Heartland Forest. Now this is where we held our classes. Uh, Dan bent over backwards, provided us with fresh fruit every day. The staff at the Heartland Forest fed our vets a couple of times. Betty's Restaurant fed our vets. Mike, Mick and Angelo's uh, gave us a great discount. Harvey's in Niagara Falls gave us a great discount. Sophie's in Buffalo gave us a great discount the morning before we took them back to the to uh, the airport. Falls Manor, Niagara Falls, these guys really went overboard. They fed our vets for free every morning. That was 14 mornings, seven, uh, five vets in each, six vets in each class. Mel at Burlington Hardwoods uh, donated wood for our cause. Peninsula Inn and Resort, where the guys stayed, gave us a great discount. And Hoops Bar and Grill in Niagara Falls also gave us a great discount on feeding the vets. So it wouldn't have been possible without the help from these people. Enjoy these interviews. These guys uh, really, really made a difference for them. And uh, we're thrilled about it. We're going to continue to do it. Our next classes are scheduled for the middle of November. We're going to run two classes every November and every April for as long as we can do it. If you want to read a little bit more about us, there's lots of videos that we've posted. You can also, if you go to the site of uh, Niagara, Niagara This Week, which is a local newspaper, and just uh, search vets. You'll see some stories where one of the editors came out and read, uh, wrote up about what we're doing. Anyway, I uh, tip my hat to those who have helped, and I'm asking for your support. Enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. This isn't my shop, but welcome anyway. We're here in Niagara Falls, Ontario, at the Heartland Forest Learning Center. We rent this facility, and we conduct our workshops. Where we bring disabled vets up and we give them a week of training on hand tool woodworking. It's very therapeutic. Anyway, I want to introduce you to Bill Bailey. Bill is a uh, disabled vet. He was a Navy corpsman attached to the Marines. I got that right? That's correct. And I'm just going to ask him a few questions. <coughs> he has a few things he'd like to tell you about the week that he just spent. And I'm going to leave it to Bill. Bill? Yes, sir. How's it been from Monday to Friday? Uh, as the old guy in the group, uh, I've gotten actually a lot of respect because most of these guys are in their 20s or 30s. And I was back from Vietnam 10, 15 years before there were even a twinkle in their dad's eyes. Uh, and I mean, everything that we've done this week has contributed to my feeling of peace and uh, being able to be useful again when my wife of uh, 38 years past in 2009, I really thought things were over. And with, the, yeah, I was gonna miss her every day. Yeah. But uh, so now I can go into the shop. Uh, this is one of the tools that was contributed, and I never knew how to sharpen or how to use one of these guys, and. I love tools, but I've been what I would call a normite through the years. I've built furniture for a long time. Uh, 
but always with power tools. And when I would read through the fine woodworking magazine that I've subscribed to for like 35 years, I would see something on planes or chisels, and I would just blow by it because I didn't understand it. But now I've been going back through my old magazines, and I've been reading the articles that include those things that I used to omit. So it's kind of cool. Let me ask you a question, if I will. Uh, as a normal person, I don't know a whole lot about post-traumatic stress. I'm learning. Do you have any advice for uh, the population at large and how to treat soldiers that are coming back and are suffering from this injury that we can't see? And that's an excellent point. A lot of people think that maybe some are faking it because they can't see a broken leg or missing limb or something like that. But that is so far from the truth. You saw your fair share of missing limbs, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not going to tell you any stories right now, but uh, for about, oh, maybe half the time that I was in country, we were actually out in the float phase and we received casualties directly from the field. Sometimes we'd get them within five minutes of the time that they were wounded, and I ran the intensive care unit. So we saw the worst of the worst. Um, we'd see people that had been hit just incredibly blown apart as we pulled back together. We had 97% survival rate. But I get nightmares. I have a, a med that I take every night that my psychiatrist has prescribed. And I still have the nightmares, but I don't remember them nearly as intensely as I used to. I take a lot of meds but it allows me to be somewhat normal. And one thing that I miss a lot about my wife, she never considered me as a broken person. And so if you find somebody that has PTSD, you might not even know that they have. If you hear a loud noise and you see them kind of cringe, that's a giveaway. If they sit in a corner of a restaurant, always with their back against the wall, that's another sign. If somebody comes up behind them talking quickly or loudly and you see them do one of these, that's another giveaway. And most people are just not aware of that. Again, it's not a visible uh, dis disability, but it definitely is something that affects people's lives. It really does, deeply. Thank you. Did you want to say anything to the folks at the Woodcraft? I know you wanted to, that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, we, we contacted uh, several stores at Woodcraft and asked them if they would help in, in funding tools for the vets. And uh, these guys were uh, almost reluctant to receive that charity, but as I told the last group, uh, you have to learn to freely give and graciously receive. I'll give you the last word as far as anything you want to say to the Woodcraft folks. Uh, what these folks that are donating things show is support, respect, uh, and it's something that I know I appreciate and I believe everybody else in this group really appreciates. Uh, when we came back from Vietnam, we were not respected at all. And these days with the heightened um, sensitivity to the military, now people are realizing that there is definitely uh, significant things that people go through. Uh, one of the phrases a friend of mine has on his car is, uh, Freedom is not free. And another part of his car says, S let's see, all gave some, some gave all. So those people who are contributing to this not only are helping us regain some of the peace that we have been missing in our lives, but we're given a sense of being valuable again, being able to do something. Uh, we're creating, for example, hand-cut dovetails. I've always known that that was a mark of true craftsmanship. I had no clue how to do it. So now I have a pretty good idea good. with your teaching. Bill Bailey, we appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. My next student slash disabled veteran is Mark Oliver from Idaho. Mark served in, it was a secure, sorry, intelligence analyst with the U.S. Army, served in Afghanistan. Mark, what would you like to tell? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it's, it's been a huge honor and pleasure to come and, and learn from you, Ron. I've seen your videos.
videos, found you on YouTube, and um, got into your course online, and I started to watch and, and follow the project plans there. Um, so coming here and meeting you and, and taking the class was a pretty big deal. Don't forget Jake. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Couldn't do it without Jake. Um, let's see. Where should I start? Where should I well, start with the you, it, 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 Jake and I contacted various companies to help with the tools. And you were the recipient of the tools. Um, very, very grateful for the tools. Um, I. <laughs> A lot of the things that I wish to do and hope to do, I wouldn't be able to do without them. Um, and there, there's a cost to entry barrier that it's, it's expensive to get into, and uh, it, it's very enabling. Yeah, so I just wanted to say so thank you to those that contributed. It's, it's, Mark, if I can ask you a question, one of the things that I want to do is I want to reach out to other disabled vets. So, as a disabled vet yourself, speak to the disabled vets that may be watching this in terms of what Hanford Woodworking does for you and the opportunity to be able to participate with other veterans in a path class like this. Okay. Um, to reach out to other veterans, I need to explain myself. I was uh, diagnosed with PTSD, dissociative stress disorder borderline personality features, and I have a seizure issue as well. Um, and there's psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. Uh, it seems like when I got home from Afghanistan, um, the longer away from returning home, the worse things got. Um, and um, it, it's a slow process, but it's also very fast. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but the vets will understand that. Um, you suddenly find yourself in a really disruptive life that you're not used to visit. It's, things are different. Your life is different. Um, there was a period where I had uh, really disruptive sleep. I wasn't doing well. And then one day, all the stress, it was actually four months after I got out of the service, and all the stress had just built up. And I had a dissociative feud, and what that is, is uh, it's like a pressure cooker. Um, everything just built up beyond a point that I could uh, manage, or that I could function with, and I, I blacked out, essentially, uh, consciously. Um, I left my home, I packed bags, I got my car, and I split, and um, I, I, I woke up in my car not knowing where I was. It was a very disoriented, very confused. Um, and it was, it was shocking to me. And I left Idaho and I ended up in Colorado 24 hours later. And I had to call my, my wife and I, I I said, I don't know where I am, and she tried to talk me into the hospital. The police picked me up, and then I was in inpatient for about three months after that. Um, and that wasn't, that was the first of a number of dissociative episodes that I had. Um, I've, I lost vision, and I lost uh, the forward momentum. Like, that, that was so frightening to me. Especially after the second time it happened, it was so frightening to me that I I was talking to my mom and I was like, I don't think I'll make it to my next birthday. And I wasn't looking farther ahead in, in my time management or my schedule or in my life more than a week. I just had no more to um, I started working about full time, about five or six months ago. Um, things have been getting better. I have a better um, medication profile, which is ridiculous. That's too much, uh, but that's a whole other issue. Um, it was really woodworking 
that has brought my future back into focus. Um, I'm planning on going back to school. I, I have goals to achieve. I'm, I'm starting to see five and ten years ahead of, again in my life. Um, you know, it, it feels like woodworking is the thing that's been pulling me out of the pit. So, um, you know, all I did to get here and with Rob in the training, I sent him an email. That's all. I, and I knew it. And I said, I do woodworking. I really enjoy it. I'm a disabled vet. And I knew he had a program for disabled vets. Um, and then I think it was a month, month and a half, he responded back and invited me over. And uh, <laughs> I'm glad I did. It's just exciting. It's very, very exciting. Um, how, how important has it been for you to be there with other disabled vets that are in the same situation? Uh, Did it make any difference? Absolutely. Every time, every time I'm around other veterans, I I get greater clarity in my own issues, camaraderie with the friends, and and it helps me when I say my issues out loud. And someone else totally understands it. You know, every time I've been hospitalized, I have instant friends, just instant uh, connection with people because um, there's a just a communal understanding of really difficult things. Uh, but here it's been really fun. Not had a single issue with anyone, and uh, it's. It's a really tough problem because a lot of times the issue for PTSD is very isolating. Um, it's a very private problem. So it's the programs like yours that actually make a difference. You can go to the VA and say I have some troubles and they'll hand you some pills and say go talk to someone. And I'm not going to put down the psychotherapy. It's very important. It has helped me. Um, but programs like this Programs like wilderness outings, fly fishing, the tangible things. Uh, it's, it's the tangible hands on programs that really matter. And I was very excited to be a part of this. It's not a difficult thing for a veteran to come in and message Rob and, and become a part of it. I think if two years down the road I hear that this program stops, I think I'd be pretty sad. <laughs> because it was it, it was that good for me and, and uh, it can do a lot for others as well. Well Mark, I am glad I made the phone call. I know Jake and I have both benefited from this and it's not that we're here to be benefited from, but we can't help being associated with you guys with a coming away feeling like we're better people as a result. So what's the saying? If you walk in coal, you gather coal dust, you walk in gold, you gather gold dust. So I got some gold dust for you, brother. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for being here too. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, welcome back. It's another day. If you can hear the background noise, we still have guys working in the shop right behind us. I have Devin from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's another one of our disabled vets, Marine. And uh, I'm just going to ask him some questions and you can get the answer. First of all, how did you find us? How did you find out about what we were doing? Um, it's actually through YouTube. It's looking around, trying to trying to get get going on woodworking, and uh, it's running off of a set of tools from Home Depot. So that's the only only knowledge I had. So it's looking around on YouTube, trying to figure it out, and ended up seeing a video with Ryan from uh, was it Shop Build? Yeah. So then he came over and we talked to him in the same town. Yeah. So and then. Noticed Didn't know each other. <laughs> noticed you were pretty good at, at handcuff dovetails and other things, so I started watching more of your videos and ended up finding the red, that video on your website. So. Excellent. Do you, uh, you've been here for a week. This is Friday. We started on Monday. We're already Friday. Uh, I know. It was my best. How, how, how has it been like? It, it's been great. There's been a lot of information absorbed. I think a majority of us hadn't, hadn't come with the level of knowledge you used to 
to used to teaching the older retired guys. It's been good. Um, I've learned more this week than I than I have since I tried to start woodworking. So it's, it's been it's been great. There's been a lot of uh, camaraderie between, between the, the different guys that are here, and uh, it seems to blend in well with the civilian people here too. That we're, uh, so being part of a group with other disabled vets was a plus. Yeah, I think it's always a plus. It's, it's always good to, to see the other guys, to see what everybody's going through, and kind of come around with that. Now, you're here because of the generosity of a bunch of people, and you also get to take over a bunch of tools. Yes, sir. It's kind of, it's been I know you wanted to say thank you. Yeah, um, there's a Woodcraft has been great. There's a couple specific stores that have uh, learned a lot. A lot of uh, tools and money towards this uh, trend. Trend gave us sharpen stuff. Um, IBC gave us chisels. It's just been, it's been on the road. You know, Rob gave us saws. <laughs> um, Jake made it. Jake made it. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been a blessing. Uh, who was it? It was uh, the, the Winklers up in, uh, in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg, yeah, sponsored. Way more than I expected, and, and it's, it's just been, it's been amazing. Food was good. Yeah. Food was good. Can't help mentioning that some of the local restaurants, one in particular, the name is Jake. Where do we have breakfast? Sir, every morning? Sir. Falls Manor. Falls Manor. <laughs> so if you're ever in Niagara Falls, please have your breakfast at Falls Manor, and the address is. Just the street. What's the street name? We drive there every day. <laughs> Lundy's Lane. Lundy's Lane. And they were kind enough. They fed the vets for us every morning. Complimentary. Oh, that's good. It's been an amazing experience. It really, really has. Okay, now I want you to talk to your fellow disabled veterans and tell them what. A lot of them don't know anything about woodwork, so you get the last word. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I just say, if you're if you're sitting around uh, just fighting your battles in your head and got nothing to do to take your mind off of it, and woodworking is a great great way to, to put your hands to work and, and do something productive and learn something new. Keep your keep your mind busy. Get to know get to know great people and uh, be able to pass it on to others. Probably the best thing that's happened for me in a while. So, anything about the the branch of service that you served in that you wanted to say? No. How about say hi to your wife? Yeah. Hi, Ellie. Is the baby coming? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's still pregnant, so that's that's good. We're out, we're really excited. Uh, in November to be dated. It's still it's still really early. But and you said it's going to be the the cribs going to be the first thing I make when I get back. So. And you're going to follow my example and have how many? Ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be it's a great having you here, Devin. I appreciate you being here. Our next vet slash student is Sean from Arkansas. Sean? <laughs> I was telling him, I said, we don't, we don't practice this. This is just speaking from the heart. So I want him to feel comfortable. Uh, there's three things I want, you to, I want you to do, please. I want you to uh, tell them what it's done for you Monday to Friday. I want you to speak to other disabled veterans and tell them what it can do for them. And then I know you already said you want to be able to thank those who participated in, to get you here and also to provide you with tools. So. Well, first, uh, Monday through Friday came with a whole lot of a whole lot of blank slate. Didn't know really what I was going to get out of class because I didn't really know what my real skills were since I had things I produced at home were pretty bad. <laughs> so coming to class, I was worried that, well, maybe it's not really a skill problem. Maybe it's an aptitude problem. I don't know. Um, so I came into it kind of with the hope that I would be able to get something out of it. Your teaching technique is phenomenal, uh, being able to follow these these steps, every step along the way, you know whether the whether to even go on to the next step by the step you're on. If it's not right, why go on? Because it's not going to be good. Um, so 
here we are Friday, and I can't believe the quality of my dovetails coming out of this class off of a handsaw. It's incredible. Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen a dovetail produced, unless it was produced by a router, that was as tight fitting as the dovetails that, that were producing. You, you were fast too. Sean was always one of the first ones. If it wasn't the first one done, he was the second one done. And usually in a new class like that, you'll get good precision, but it's taken a day. You were the opposite. You the opposite in terms of speed. And you did you did your quick. Thank you. Thank you. So the Monday through Friday, I feel going home. I'm I'm excited to go start making some shaves at home, cutting some dovetails at home. Um, it's really good stuff. Really good stuff. What was the next topic? You want to thank? Yes, definitely. Uh, so I've been struggling uh, with PTSD issues for roughly 25 years. Um, didn't recognize it at first. Uh, didn't really recognize it up until about four years ago. By a ruined marriage, uh, barely being able to hold a job for more than a couple years at a time, causing PTSD brains stay in the negative so bad that anytime you're doing anything, it's always negative. And it's when you're in that negative, going to anger and arguments and contention is natural. And so who wants to be around somebody like that? Get fired a lot. Um, so over the last <clears throat> few years, my wife and I, we moved from Tulsa, Oklahoma over, over, over to Arkansas uh, in an effort to kind of normalize life a little bit, takes a lot of the stress out. Uh, we bought a house with no shop at all, no garage, it's just got carport. So not really a whole lot of place to do anything. Uh, but after laying down my bike, um, my motorcycle last spring, I was... For some people that wouldn't understand what laying down a bike meant. Okay. Uh, biker talk. Biker talk, sorry. I wrecked my bike. I, I was going into a curve and, and had to lay it down on the side to avoid going head on into a car. And Fortunately, the car missed me and the bike, and we slid down the road, and uh, I was pretty much on bed rest for about a month and a half or so, um, about three or four months on crutches, hobbling around. During that time, lots, lots of time to sit around. Started out just binge watching silliness on Netflix. Um, then, I can't remember, I either saw a video shared on Facebook or something, uh, and it got me watching a lot of YouTube videos and, and uh, you know, different YouTube content providers. And uh, so I got kind of excited about what working with him. My, my grandfather was a cabinet maker. Um, my dad raised me always working with my hands, doing things. Um, so it, it was kind of natural to fall back into that and, and it felt good. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of peace in working with wood. Very calm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. How about those great tools you get to take on? Yeah, those are amazing. When I was, so I'll bridge that for a second. Um, when I was kind of going through this this whole YouTube thing and, and getting getting kind of the passion for woodworking back again. After all these years, I still hobbling around on crutches. I nailed together a two by four workbench and uh, dug out a box of old antique hand planes that my grandfather had and, and a few chisels and made my best attempts at doing things with those tools that were far from tuned and far from sharp. Uh, did a lot of YouTube videos on sandpaper on glass sharpening and, and all sorts of different things like that. Uh, then 
was really kind of getting frustrated with the quality that I was seeing on these videos versus what I was able to produce and got me kind of down. Uh, saw an ad on Craigslist for a guy that had, had attended your class and he was selling some tools. Uh, we talked. We won't mention the brand. No brands. <laughs> but he wasn't selling my tools, right? Because he, uh, he had bought your tools at your class and had sold his not Rob Cosmo quality tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were much higher quality than what I had. So it, it gave me a step and started to be able to see that it wasn't, it wasn't an aptitude problem, it was a skill problem. And I was going to be able to learn that way. Um, things were getting better, still not great, which again got me kind of frustrated. But talking to him got me introduced to the online workshop stuff. Um, I sent you an email and you, for, you know, the, out of the kindness of your heart, give, give, us a, give us these online workshops for the vets. Uh, so I started watching your videos. I binge watched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And just the, the teaching methods that you have, the patience, the attention to detail, the, the honest mistakes that you make and then correct them is so valuable. Not just a rehearsed video on YouTube that comes out perfect every time, but the online workshops, just the progression, the thought processes, it, it's invaluable. Um, then uh, you came up with the idea to bring vets here, and so I applied for that, and was fortunate enough to, to be here, obviously. So it's been a really, really, really fun road with some ups and downs. But going home after this, I'm just I'm ecstatic. I have the tools now that I'm not fighting the tool. I know how through the class to keep it sharp, keep it tuned, take care of it, and make it perform at the level that it can perform. So no longer will it be a tool issue. It will now just be me practicing the techniques I've learned here. And getting better. So now I need you to speak to the disabled vets who hope you're watching this that maybe haven't even thought about woodworking. How does hand tool woodworking play with managing what you deal with with post traumatic stress? Well, with PTSD, one of the major symptoms that, that I fight with is that negative thought cycle. So yeah. you, know, you start out saying that you're frustrated with something and then I'm not good enough to do that thing, then it, I'm a piece of crap. I'm worthless. I'm, you know, and it just goes, it goes so dark so fast in minutes. It's not, it's not a hours, days thing, it's minutes. Um, it's the part that chokes me out. I'm standing at the workbench. My brain is calm. I can focus. All the pain's gone. Wood is good. Wood is good. For anybody that has never thought about woodworking, gone into one of the big box stores and seen saws and everything else. Uh, you gotta, you gotta get into it. It's, I've tried everything from drugs and alcohol to going out and finding fights to let out stress and, you know, recently had a horrible PTSD episode in, in January and February where I was in the hospital for for several weeks, and I scared my poor little wife to death, and destroyed most of my kitchen with my hands. I, I broke this this bone. And 
whole time that's going on. The whole time that's going on, I'm just watching myself do this. I'm an observer. Why can't I stop? Concerned, all you have to do is send her out. thing I want to do right now is just thank Zero, absolutely zero experience. So. All right, good. So you learned something. I, I think. 
anything, so hopefully it sticks. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, you want to thank you want to thank some people that were that participated or at least made it possible. Oh my gosh. I, know. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of my wife. Um, that means so much to me as we've been through a lot together and especially with my medical journeys. Um, to have that support behind me is unbelievable. Um, and the people who gave money for this is uh, thank you. Thank you so much for helping with guys that need you. Uh, it's not really From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now, what about the vets? Your fellow soldiers were sitting there dealing with similar situations. Talk to them directly so that they, we can at least So let me start that by just telling a small story of how I found you, and it was just through uh, my wife and I. We bought property, we didn't buy much of a house, we've done a lot of renovations, a lot of work, so I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube researching videos, and I stumbled across Rob ripping through the dovetail cut and mints, and I was just like flabbergasted, which drove me to your YouTube videos, which then very shortly drove me to your webpage, where I stumbled across this video right in your front webpage, talking about doing this program for veterans. And uh, I said, like, wow, this is, this is incredible. I, I, I would never pay to take a course like this since I had zero background in it, and I, I don't know the value, but seeing you talking about your experience with some of the other veterans uh, that, that you've encountered and why you started doing this, made me start thinking about uh, myself and um, how it might, might benefit me. And uh, through that, I decided to finally contact you, and I can honestly say I've never had a week in my life go by as quickly as this week has. Um, with a lot of my medical stuff flaring up this winter, um, I, I've not been in a good place. Uh, it's been a very, very tough winter. And I honestly don't think I've smiled this much in, uh, in quite a while. Genuinely smiled. You know, not, not putting the mask on and, you know, playing How the much of that is good with Jake? Uh, I don't really like Jake, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, we kind of kind of got off topic there. Kinda. Remind me of the question again. <laughs> Do we need to rewind? I can't remember. No, we're talking about how has this helped you deal with your post-traumatic stress? How is it going to help other soldiers? Talk to the guys that don't know, that hopefully will stumble across this video, that there's hope there for them. No, I, I spent a lot of time working on breathing exercises and trying to keep anxiety down and uh, maintain calm. And this has been so unbelievably meditative for me. Um, and I've actually had a very introspective week sitting there. Uh, I think the new love and light is hand playing action. I don't think I've ever enjoyed such a repetitive action in, in my history on this planet. <laughs> And when you just kind of get in that mode, uh, you can shut out other things and, and do a lot of thinking. And, uh, you know, I've actually had a couple light bulbs come on as far as, as, far as my life's concerned and, and some of the issues that I deal with. And I, I can't uh, tell you guys enough if, if this is uh, something that you're even interested in, I, I couldn't recommend it more. Um, and more than just that, this is something I get to take home, I get to teach to my wife who likes to tinker around with things as well. And uh, it's this activity that I know we'll enjoy together as a couple. And uh, I, I think it's more than just a unilateral uh, experience. I think it's much deeper than that for myself. Good food? I like Canadian food. You know how many shawarmas in the US? I'm so happy we have shawarmas up here. He likes bacon. <laughs> and bacon. Bacon, of course. Not Canadian bacon, that's a scourge. <laughs> we were talking about we found this what's it called Jake Shwarma Sahara Shwarma that's another place you need to visit if you're ever in Niagara Falls fantastic food great and you're getting the last word anything else you want to say thank you Rob thank you Rob thank you Rob it's a pleasure to have you here enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> this is a camera <laughs>
Are you still filming? <laughs> Hi folks, welcome to my April workshop. We're at the Heartland Forest Learning Center in Niagara Falls, Ontario. We come here in April and again in November. We teach five-day hand tool workshops that we call Training the Hand, where we cover all the basic skills required to use hand planes, chisels, saws. Uh, probably the highlight of the week is learning how to hand cut a dovetail without having any test fit and putting it together right from the saw. So, we mix these classes. Half of the students are disabled veterans that we bring up where donors contribute so we can bring them up at no cost to them. And the other half are civilians that pay the bill. And we have one here. This is Daryl from Mich Carolina. North Carolina. I know it's did right sooner or later. So, Daryl is one of the civilians, as I mentioned, and uh, I just wanted to give him an opportunity to tell you a little bit about the experience that he's had in the last week, uh, both in learning woodworking skills and also just being part of this incredible group. Take it away, Daryl. All right. Well, absolutely, it's been a great experience. Uh, I came here um, for the woodworking, really, uh, to learn, and uh, I saw on the website about the uh, opportunity, the um, sort of the, the therapy opportunity or, or even ministry opportunity it is with the uh, veterans and that also appealed to me. Um, Selfishly, at the same time, I was um, I was very interested in woodworking because uh, I've, I've tried a few things in the shop myself, but uh, honestly, uh, I realize now that I did not know how to sharpen a plain iron or a chisel and, and therefore I cannot use the plain iron or a chisel properly. Uh, so I've gone from pretty much zero um, to having learned quite a lot this week. It's been just an absolutely, just a <laughs> worth every penny, no question. You want to show that that's going to happen a little yes. closer? Yes, so this Dave, is... Can you, can you get really close on this? This is dump number... This is my second attempt here. Um, Not here, ever? Well, yeah, because I, I had never done hand, hand cut dovetails prior to this. Um, and then this here was my second of actually trying to join two boards together in a dovetail. And uh, I went through a lot of uh, um, frustration, blood, sweat, and tears. Um, prior to this, there were probably two hours prior to this when I thought, boy, I just can't do it. And just keep, um, by just, you know, staying focused on the techniques and taking uh, time, uh, really to my surprise, came out with, with what I was um, just very, very pleased with. Um, one of the most satisfying moments uh, uh, of the week is just having this go together and planning it up and seeing how uh, how almost to me perfect it looks, which is just uh, something I never thought possible. Can I get my two cents worth? Absolutely. I, I do this a lot, so I get to see a lot. And when I remember looking at Daryl and thinking, well, if I was to critique this and say, you know, you can prove this, you can prove that, I would be hard pressed. I would really have to be nitpicking in order to find something that need to be improved. So I said to him, I said, that's one of the best dovetails I've seen. And to have it be the second attempt in his entire life of doing woodwork, it's incredible. That speaks to the process. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I've become very much a believer in the process. I, I kind of had faith in it coming here. I thought it was going to be good, but uh, I've seen some of Rob's videos and have, uh, uh, have believed that the method must be very good. But I tell you, just going through it, um, as I said, it takes time, it takes practice, and that's what it's all about is, is training the hand. Uh, it really does come through, so very, very exciting to me. I'm just looking forward to, uh, you know, a life of woodworking going on, going forward now. Just hearing the sound of the planes just just taking shapes off the wood has been quite uh, soothing all week. Today. Just tell them real quick what an average day is like. We do, we do five days, and I just, from start to finish, what's the... Well, uh, Day one, we started with just the, the basics of... Uh, I, meant, I meant, we get out of bed. Oh, oh yeah. Meet. So, uh, the first thing is, uh, on the schedule-wise, is meet for breakfast around 7. Uh, it's been a group breakfast available to everyone. Um, then we get into the shop somewhere around 8. Uh, then we we start with a get-together group, maybe some instructions, uh, tips for the day, and then we get right into really um, putting our hands to the tools and working with uh, putting in practice what we've been learning and then there are different stages so it depends on what day uh, of the week it is uh, it, it determines the, the activity for the day but uh, we take a break at lunch time we do a late lunch generally because uh, that beats beats the crowd or I should say it's after the crowd and then we work on into the evening and finish up around eight and have a very late dinner and get some quick 
next week and then start again early the next morning. And uh, for those who want to come early, uh, you know, that's an opportunity, so that's been good. Also, um, one night we get to stay late, so that's, that's been great as well. Food's been good? Food's been outstanding. In fact, uh, the gentleman that runs the place here also uh, runs a produce um, company, I guess. Uh, so he brings in fresh produce, uh, fruits, um, vegetables, uh, and that's been great as well. Oh, that's Dan. Dan, yes, Dan. Uh, he's just done a fabulous job. So you've enjoyed it? Absolutely. As I said, it's been worth every penny. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for ever since I signed up and talked to Rob the first time. I've been counting down the days. Uh, I don't get a whole lot of uh, free time with my occupation, uh, so I've been looking forward to this. It's been the best vacation I've had in years, I think. Um, uh, but it's absolutely been worth every penny. It's, it exceeded my expectations. Wonderful. Daryl, it's been our pleasure to have you here. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. We don't get ladies in our class very often, and I appreciate when they do come because it just adds a little level of class to a bunch of grumpy old men. This is Nancy from Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor Michigan. Yes. And uh, Nancy is a therapist. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have her tell you the difference that she's experienced from Monday when she showed up to Friday when you're almost finished. And take away. Absolutely. So Monday when I showed up, I hadn't woodworked in about 10 years. And what's amazing to me is how quickly I started to gain some skills and skills I'd never had before. And I think the huge difference from classes I've taken in the past is that Rob is a wonderful teacher and communicator. Um, I've had classes before from um, woodworkers who are great at their craft. And while Rob is great at his craft, he can really communicate it very well, break things down into small parts that are really understandable. Um, and he's willing to take the time to do that too, um, open to questions, um, always available. And I find that that was extremely different from any experience I'd had before in woodworking school. So for me to kind of catch up so quickly from Monday to Friday, I think was because of his availability as well as his um, different approaches for teaching person in a way that they could best learn. And I guess one of my best experiences this week was um, Rob just taking us through um, cutting a dovetail, but breaking it down step by step, making sure we all understood it. Every question was a good question. Um, and he took time with each of us till we got it right. Um, so I think that that was what was really impressive. In terms of the class, the environment was wonderful. It's We have fun, it's welcoming. Uh, I, the only woman here and the guys have been great, but I think it's because of the environment that Rob creates, which is very caring and warm and fun. And uh, it's just been a joy. I've, I've loved every minute of it. Um, and I'm going to keep coming back to any class at all. You got to be in a class with five disabled veterans. Can you speak to that? Oh my gosh. So I had never been around um, disabled veterans or veterans in general. So. Uh, just learning more about what they experience, um, having to walk a certain way, speak a certain way, and really listen to know how best to respect them and their challenges has been very humbling, and um, I've grown to appreciate their, their lives, and uh, I think I've been touched just being here this week and knowing them, and uh, I want to keep somehow being involved now. And good food? Wonderful, wonderful companionship. It's like a big family going out to eat, which is a great thing. I love it. Uh, I love having all these brothers at mealtime. A great conversation. Uh, people from all different walks of life with lots of fun stories to share. And, uh, and good fun. Good, good, good companionship. And being the only girl, we spoiled her rotten. Thanks, man. Nancy, it's been a pleasure. we teach a class, we always get a couple of guys that manage to lighten it for everybody. And uh, these are the ones that we have really, when we think of them six months, a year from now, we get a smile. Remember Dave? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Dave. This is Dave from Michigan. And uh, I'm going to ask, he had a full head of hair when he came on Monday. Dave, not to stress you out. Lots of failure, but uh, at the end you get success. I'm 
very proud of this. Uh, I came in essentially with zero. Did you ever figure what that one little joint probably cost you? As far as time and effort? Money. Don't want to know. I don't like to think about it. <laughs> I'd have to call some uh, labor department on you or something. Uh, but no, I essentially came in with uh, zero woodworking skills. I've uh, watched Rob on uh, YouTube in awe, and every time I picked up tools and tried to repeat what he did, it was just a mess, and I'd get frustrated and throw my tools and then walk away. But uh, that was your closet for your tools. Well, he he dented them. Different story. <laughs> yeah, it, but we only have so much time. You, you're ten cents an hour, all right. Uh, but um, yeah, coming here. You know, he demystifies everything from sharpening. There's so much, you know, uh, techniques out there that are just overdoing it. Uh, he breaks it down, makes it simple. And, I mean, he really gave me the confidence to, uh, to go home and actually pursue the, the hobby that I wanted to for a long time. And, I, I mean, I would pay double the money for that. Uh, Can I get that in? It, it, hey, absolutely. It was it was by far the best money I spent on, on my hobby of woodworking so to date. And um, you know, hopefully I'll be back for the for the advanced eventually, go home and get some practice in. Um, you know, Rob's a great guy, very good teacher, uh, and the class was great. We had uh, half veterans. Um, Who change? Very nice guys. Keep it uh, PG on here. <laughs> you want to talk about Jig? But um, yeah, very good, very good group. Uh, and actually, yeah, Jake was uh, was very helpful in his own right. Uh, he can be a pain sometimes, uh, like a little brother that just keeps getting you. But uh, no, overall, a wonderful experience. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, yeah, I, I'm just so happy with what I've learned, and uh, I feel like I've made some true friends here. And you know, um, yeah, like I said. This is the first step on my path of woodworking, and I can't wait to see where it goes. So, how was your experience being here with five disabled vets? Oh, great! Very great guys. Um, you know, everybody's got an interesting story, and they're you know everybody's. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a, been a really all around good experience. You know, and uh, to see you get back to them, and you know, just to be around them and laugh and joke and, and kind of hear their stories and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just all around experience. Good food. Food is good. The food is good. good Shawarma. Canadian food. Canadian, Canadian food. Is food. Is good. What? Shawarma. Fantastic, wasn't it? It was very good. Very good. Good. Dave Harvey's. <laughs> Harvey, yes, definitely good. <laughs> Worship for Harvey's. Yeah. <laughs> it was an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yeah. So, uh, we, every time we have a class, there's always one guy that uh, has enough of an accent that we go home and mimic him. So this is Mike from Boston, and it was a great having him here. I'm going to let him tell you his, his experience. My experience overall was phenomenal. Monday I came in very, um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, I'm much better today on Friday than I was Monday. I came in not knowing that much and just watching Rob's videos. Very informal, teaches you a lot all week. The class is well worth it. Definitely looking back, would recommend it. Um, hanging out with everyone was great. Uh, the class couldn't have for a better group. Hearing the vet stories was outstanding and uh, Interacting with everyone is it's, it's great. Great atmosphere, great memories. And a friend I'll never forget him. And Mike. Mike. It's a guy I'll never forget. Um, couldn't ask for a better week. Definitely would recommend it. And just that we found you home with some good memories. Great memories. Great nice facility. Nice facility. Good people that run the facility. Great people. Good food. Good food. All around a great time. Good joints? Good joints. You want to show that a little closer, Jake? We, we, what we do is uh, to try to make, so they're not just going home with short boards and shavings, the wood that we dimension on Thursday, on Wednesday, 
we make, this is called a bench hook. In case you're not familiar with it, it's something designed to cross cut your pieces, your wood pieces on, that protects your bench. And it's a little fancy than it needs to be, but we throw some dovetails in there. In this case, we use some walnut and some pine. And uh, Mike was probably the fastest in the class. He was always three or four steps ahead of me, but uh, did some really good work. Now, you're a fabricator anyway. Yes. So it's kind of in your Mike's a welder, a fabricator. So this is, uh, well, do you like wood better than metal now? Yes. Yes. Uh, You've changed me. We've won. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, it's been a pleasure having you here. Well, thank you very, very much, Rob. We're back with what will be our last interview. This is Mark from Ottawa, or has he, uh, since most of our students count from the United States, just how it happens, he's been marked a Canadian because we've won our yeah. Canadian mark. Yeah. So Mark, I'll let you talk to us. What, uh, we're here on Friday, we started on Monday. Yeah. Tell us what's happened to you. So, well, um, I've never touched a woodworking tool in my life till I got here. I got some, but you know, this was my first foray into it, and uh, I was really looking forward to, you know, really concentrating on the woodworking stuff, and, and it was just a coincidence that it, it happened to be, you know, it, the vets were here, and, and it, this was the cause, and uh, I, it, like, selfishly, I didn't really pay much attention to that part of it, you know, <clears throat> I was here, f like, for me, and to develop a skill that I didn't know before, and, um, yeah, so, so the dovetailing part of it, um, like I watch you do it, and you know, as I'm sure many other viewers do, you go, oh, you know, that looks pretty simple, I can do that, and um, I'm just going to show you the first, this was the first one I did. Come in close to you. And it's, um, I, was, I, was, I was pretty disappointed, you know, I, I, I kind of, I think I, I, I was a bit hasty uh, with this one. Um, and I kind of was discouraged, and I was like, this is, this is all in one day, mind you. So I was a bit discouraged, and I thought, I'm never going to be able to do this. But after a day of practicing, and, and you know, with a bit of extra teaching and stuff, I was able to do something that I was a lot more, a lot more proud of, which was this one. We made these, these nice little things that I'm going to take home. But um, aside from that, the thing I really took away... Um, was was being able to hang out with these guys, and uh, it was it was a really really touching week, and it was just really organic, and, and you really get to see um, how important it is for them to be able to come and, and do this. Like everybody is really really happy to be here working, and you can tell that you know the atmosphere is just unbelievable, and. Um, I think we need, you know, more Canadian guys to come here because I'm kind of getting uh, razzed with being Canadian. You know, we're we're here in Canada, and there's all these American guys coming in, and uh, you know, but that's beside the point. It was it was uh, really eye-opening, and I would uh, I would really recommend it to anyone who wants to do woodworking and get a huge uh, bonus out of it um, to be with these guys. So I'm definitely going to come back uh, again and do this. It's a great experience. Yeah. Great work. Yeah. God save the Queen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you being here. Yeah.